All right. Hello. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the Mind Museum's Facebook page and welcome to another edition of Mind at Home. I'm Mind Mover Aaron. I'm one of the resident science communicators and one of the resident biologists of the Mind Museum. Okay, so uh, while the metro and the rest of the other surrounding provinces are still under modified enhanced community quarantine, it's still advisable that you do not go outside your houses. Okay, so unless those are very essential, like you're getting food or medicine, it's advisable that you still stay at home. So what are we going to do at home while we're still indoors? So we're going to be doing another science experiment for this morning. So it's not actually an experiment per se. So it's an activity, a very easy biology activity that you could do at home. Okay, so for this morning, um, it won't be only me that will be doing this activity. So I'll be joined by three other mind movers. So before we introduce our activity, so I'd like to introduce you to the rest of the three mind movers that will be joining me this morning. So those are mind mover Peter, mind mover Nat, and mind mover Abby. Okay, so can we bring him up on screen to say hello? All right, hi everyone. Okay, so we'll be broadcasting this Mind at Home from all over Metro Hi. Manila and its surrounding provinces. Hi. Hi, everyone. Okay, so let's hide them for now so we can show our audiences what we will be doing this morning. All right. So let me just bring it back up. All right. Hey. Okay. So for this morning, we will be doing an activity. It's called Operation Organelle. So the word organelle may be familiar to some of you. So it sounds like the word organ, right? Okay, so it's organ with a little bit at the end. So organelle, it just means organ-like. Okay, so if you saw in the video description, uh, we said that the smallest unit of living life, the smallest unit of life that we have is our cells. So we have billions up to trillions of cells inside and around our bodies that help us to function. But it would be surprising to some of you who don't know yet that the cells actually have smaller parts inside of them. So those are your organelles. So say, for example, for us humans, we have our organs inside our body. So say, for example, the stomach, it functions to digest food. The heart functions to pump blood all around the body. So your organelles also have a similar way of working. So they are uh, tuned for a specific function inside of the cell. So we're going to be trying to replicate how the cells work inside our bodies. Okay. So what is an organelle? So we said earlier that organelle is organ-like. So it's an, a small structure. It's a membrane-bound membrane or membrane-covered structure that has a specific function. Okay, so we'll go through some organelles in our activity this morning. Okay, so we already discussed what organelles are. So what do they do? Okay, so the functions of your organelles could be broken down into three major categories. So the first one is that they store information and instruct other organelles to do other stuff. Okay, so we'll be saying later what organelle that is. Just keep it at the back of your mind. Okay, so the second one is that they make and ship products. Okay, so we'll be going into those later. So that's actually the bulk of our activity for this morning. We'll be making and shipping a product using very simple materials. And then the third function is it destroys and recycles materials. So in nature, nothing is wasted. So anything that gets destroyed is also recycled by the body for another use and another function, okay? So you might think that the three circles, the three circular categories that we have work in isolation. Well, they actually do, but the important thing to note is that they work in a sequence, okay? So you cannot uh, make and ship first your product without receiving instructions on how to make it from other organelles, okay? So if you already have an idea, we'll be showing the names of the organelles now. So the one that stores information and instructs other organelles is the nucleus. So that's the center of your command center of each cell that we have. The making and the shipping areas are your 
ER, ribosomes, and Golgi. So we'll be discussing those in detail in a while. And then your destroying and recycling centers are the proxisomes and lysosomes. All right, so before we start, if you'd like to follow us live while we're doing our very simple activity, so you could get the uh, paper materials at tinyurl.com slash operation organelle. So just print it out. Or if you don't have a printer at home, you could use any square paper. And then we'll just draw in the details later. All right? So we'll give you a few seconds to type in the link inside your browser. So it will go straight to the PDF file that you could print for this morning's activity. So that's tinyurl.com slash operation organelle. All right? So let me just stop my screen here so we can start with our activity. Okay, so we mentioned that we'll be needing paper, any square paper, but if you printed out the paper that's in the link that we provided, so it looks like this, okay? So it has a square portion, so that's the main part, and then we have these irregularly shaped sh uh, shapes over here, okay? So you might have an idea what we're, uh, what we're going to do this morning, so we're actually doing some origami folding for this morning. So origami can actually uh, help you alleviate stress and anxiety during this uh, very difficult time as recommended by the US Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, as well as it's a simple activity that you can do even with recycled materials. So any scratch paper that you have at home, you can use for this activity as long as it's square, okay? So let's bring up our three mind movers once again. And we will be assigning the roles of each of the organelles that we mentioned earlier to each of us uh, this morning. Okay, so I will be the nucleus. I will be, I have the information. I already gave some, it, some of it to you guys. And then I'll be instructing how to fold the origami uh, piece that we will be doing this morning. Okay, mind mover nat will be our endoplasmic reticulum. So uh, it was just mentioned as ER in the slide, but we'll be discussing it in a little bit more detail later. Okay, and then my movers, Abby and Pisher, will be our Golgi apparatus. Okay, so if you could notice, actually, so we have these boxes in our Zoom over here. So those are the membranes that are protecting each of us between the organelles. Okay, so and if you look at the whole box, Okay, so the entire Zoom box that includes all of us, so that functions as your cell, the whole cell. All right. Okay, so let's say, uh, see you later first to my movers, Abby and Fisher. So we'll get started with our activity for this morning. All right. So uh, my mover, Nat, do you have your square paper? All right, she has hers and it's already colored. Okay, very nice. Okay, so for, uh, for those of you guys who aren't yet uh, very capable of cutting with scissors or cutters, please ask your parents or your guardians to cut this out for you. So not just a square, uh, you could already cut the irregular shapes ahead of time. All right, so once you've cut it out, so it will look like this. So we'll focus first on our square paper. <laughs> All right, so my mover nuts hiding behind our uh, product for this morning. Okay. So the first steps, uh, as usual, would be to fold it uh, in the middle, both lengthwise and crosswise. Okay, so actually that would just be the same since it's a square. <laughs> okay, so you'll fold it in the middle two times to get sort of like a plus sign in the middle, a plus sign or a cross in the middle. Okay, so that will be our guides when we're folding the next steps, the corners. Okay, so what we'll be doing is we'll get the four corners. Okay, so that's one, two, three, and four. And we'll be folding it towards the middle. Okay, so be sure that the printed part of your paper still stays outside. Okay, so don't hide the details of your printed piece. Okay, so what we're actually doing, so we said that my mover nut is our endoplasmic reticulum. So the main function of your ER so the word endoplasmic just means endo, that's inside. Plasmic means uh, any medium, in this case, our cytoplasm of the cell. And then reticulum just means net. 
Okay, so it's a netted membrane inside the cell. Okay, so its main function is to make proteins. So, for example, our origami piece here is the protein. Okay, so my mover nut is already done. Okay, so now what we're going to do is to invert it towards the back. And then we're going to fold again the new corners, these four new corners towards the middle. So we're going to make a smaller square. All right. So there are two kinds of endoplasmic reticulum, both the smooth and the rough ER. So your rough ER has a lot of ribosomes. So the ribosomes are the actual site of protein production. So if you've printed out your paper, so you could say that your printer is sort of a ribosome since it printed out the initial product. And then what happens inside the cell is they actually fold. The proteins fold into whatever shape they need to be. So the proteins work because of their folded structure. All right? So our next step, is so you could see the eyes. So those are actually two eyes. And then sort of like a quarter circles here at the bottom. So we're going to fold it downward. Okay? So it's important that you keep the two eyes on the same side. Right? So you could fold it like this, wherein the two eyes are on the two uh, different sides of the paper, but it would look different. The final product would look different and a bit awkward, I guess. Okay, so the last step. So you'll notice that there are flaps here when we fold that, them down. So we'll, you'll just insert your fingers inside of them. Okay, then insert two more and then met, let the two ends meet. Okay, so this should be your final protein or origami product for now. Okay, so if you'll notice, it actually has a face and some teeth. Okay, so what do you think does it look like? Okay, so it's just a face, but I think it looks like a shark, right? <laughs> okay, so if this is a, sh a shark, um, my mover nut, what do you think is missing uh, on this shark? I think it's missing fins. All right. Okay, so it's missing some fins since uh, all fishes, almost all fishes have fins over here at the sides and at the top. Okay, so for that, we're going, uh, we're going to need to modify or to change some of the parts of this origami sheet. Okay, so for that, we'll be moving to one of our Golgi apparatuses. Okay, so let's say thank you and goodbye to my mover uh, not for now. And let's bring up my mover Abby on the side. All right. Okay. Hello. <laughs> okay. So Mind Mover Abby actually has a origami piece exactly like this. Okay. So since we said that it works like a production line, so the folded proteins, the initial folded proteins done at the ER are passed on to the Golgi. Okay. So that's what uh, Mind Mover Abby is holding right now. Okay. So the main function of your Golgi is to modify or to label the proteins inside the cell. Okay, so the modification that my mover not said that was missing are some fins. Okay, so my mover Abby, do you have your fins over there? All right, so let's show them to our audience. Okay, so we already have the cut out irregular shapes. So these are actually the fins of our shark. All right, so now we're going to modify our initial folded shark with our fins, okay? So if you have uh, any sticky material, so tape or glue or sticky rice, if that's what you have, okay? So you're going to attach, you're going, you're going to attach the fins <laughs> to the sides, the larger fins to the sides of the shark, and then the smaller fins at the top, okay? So we'll be doing that uh, off screen, so... I have a tape dispenser here, okay? So we said that the main function of your Golgi is to modify and to label proteins, okay? So why would you need to label them or to modify them, okay? Sometimes it's dependent on its function, okay? So usually the things that are attached to the proteins are carbohydrates or sugars, Okay, so those are just uh, the materials that you get from rice, from pasta like spaghetti or from bread. Okay, so any sugar that you eat is a form of <laughs> carbohydrate. Okay, so the carbohydrates get attached to your proteins 
sometimes just for labeling so that they know where in the body they go or sometimes they actually really need it for them to work okay so say for example for our shark here it wouldn't swim without fins right okay so that's what the modification does here okay all right so i have the two side fins attached okay so i guess my mover abby is done not yet ah she's already done all right so let me just attach the rest of my top fins over here okay so this is the uh making it's still the making portion of the organelle's function but this is already with the modification step all right so let me just attach the second fin <laughs> All right. Okay, I think, oh no, balik tad siya. Okay, <laughs> so sometimes it happens that your uh, nucleus, the instruction giver, gives out wrong instructions, but the Golgi still does it right, or the other way around. So the nucleus gives right instructions, but the Golgi doesn't do it right. But it still looks like it has working fins in the opposite direction. Okay, so we already modified our protein, our shark. It's complete. Okay, so... Now we're going to transport the uh, the shark, the protein, to somewhere else in the cell. Okay, so uh, mind mover, Abby, what do you think would we need to ship things? Like, say, for I, example, in a real factory. Um, I think we need a box to transport box. our shark friend. <laughs> yeah, okay, a box or a container, right? So <laughs> since yeah. uh, when you're stacking boxes, it's easier for the shippers and for the holders, the handlers, to hold boxes than uh, irregularly shaped pieces like these, we'll be making actually a box right now. Okay, so let's say see you later to Mind Mover Abby. Okay, thank you very much. And let's bring up Mind Mover Fisher. <clears throat> All right, Mind Mover Fisher is here. Okay, so Mind Mover Fisher is working also as a Golgi apparatus. Okay, so the first function that we did is, was that it modifies proteins. Its second function is that it transports them, it ships them out. Okay, so aside from the actual action of shipping them, it also makes the containers that uh, contain your protein products. Okay, so for this, you'll be needing a, uh, any regularly shaped paper. So it's all right if it's so. This is an A4 paper that was not cut. Okay, so but it works with square paper as well. Okay, so my mover feature is using recycled paper from, I guess, from an intermediate pad or a notebook. Okay, so if you have any spare paper lying around, uh, that would be very well and very fine. Okay, so let's start with our box making. So our first two steps would be, like in the shark, to fold them lengthwise and, so that's crosswise, crosswise and lengthwise. All right, okay. So what you should end up with is a quarter or one fourth of a piece of paper. All right. So the next step, so this could be rather confusing a bit. So if you'll notice, if you folded the paper, it has four edges in the middle. So it looks like this when you open it slightly. Okay. So you'll get one of those, one of the outside flaps, and then fold it on itself until it forms Okay, let me just do it until it forms a triangle. All right, so it should, <clears throat> the first step should look like this. Okay, so uh, let's do that again. So it's one of the flaps and then you open it and fold it down till it forms your triangle. And then you'll do the same on the other side. So you'll get this outside flap and then fold it out and down. Okay, let me just do it on the table <laughs> all right we'll fold it out and down till it forms sort of a house with a space in the middle okay so you could separate the two all right so my mover feature is going along nicely okay so what we're going to do next is to get one of these four sides and uh, fold it towards the other side so what we're doing is we're hiding the fold in the middle of your origami paper. 
Okay? So the next step would be to uh, get the edges, the two edges, one and two, of one side, and then fold them towards the middle. Okay? So once you've done that, do it on the other uh, end and then on the other side. Okay? So why would your Golgi uh, place them inside a box? So like in actual factories, so it's for easier shipping. So you could ship a lot more in the same amount of space and it's easier to handle. And it's actually a kind of protection. So say, for example, when you get uh, online products, when you uh, receive them, okay, so they're covered in bubble wrap and then they're covered in some plastic and then probably a box. Okay, so it gives the products inside protection from what's happening outside. Okay, so there are a lot of things inside the cell that would destroy protein, so the box protects them. Okay, so now when you've done that, so you'll get the bottom. Okay, so the bottom, the one that looks like sort of a rectangle, and then fold it upwards. Okay, and then you'll do the same on the other side. Okay, all right, so we're actually down to our last step. So you're going to invert the paper so that the triangle points down and then you'll get the two ends over here and then just open it till it forms okay and then uh, flatten it out spread it out until it forms your paper box okay so some of you may already know this and there are actually a lot of ways to make a paper box you could make it from a paper boat or from the method that we did here Okay, so now we're going to place our final product, our shark product, inside of the box. And then you could actually get these flaps and then fold them over itself again so that it actually has a protective cover. Okay, and then this is ready to be shipped out of the cell to wherever it needs to be. Okay, so uh, my mover Fisher has other products there. So... Uh, you could recycle the box, okay? So after you've done this activity, you could place anything inside the box, okay? It's a box, okay? So it could be a container for anything you want it to be, okay, in an instant, all right? So if you don't have any containers ready, you could have your paper box to do it, all right? Okay, so uh, that ends our uh, activity proper for this morning. So we've made our protein. We've modified it so that it works correctly. And then we've made a container or a shipping box for it to be moved out or within the cell. Okay, so let's bring up the rest of our mind movers again. Okay, so while we wait for our questions. Okay, so if you have any questions, please uh, do place them in the comment section below. And while we're still here, we could, uh, so that we could answer your questions right here and right now. Okay? So if, but if uh, you're not watching this live, you could still place your que uh, co questions and comments below. And me, I, and the rest of the Mind Movers will be available and we'll be answering your questions within the day. Okay? So if you notice, uh, our production line did not make a mention of electricity or any form of power. Okay? So there are actually two organelles that are responsible for giving power to your body or to your body cells okay so the first of them is the chloroplast okay so those are found only in plants where they convert the light light energy from the sun into sugars or food okay so with the use of carbon dioxide that they get from the atmosphere it converts them into sugars okay and then the second one is the mitochondria okay so when you have your sugar that's just an energy source that's just fuel. So you need somewhere to burn it. You need an engine or a generator for it to burn. Okay, so the mitochondria, you may know its function very well. It's the powerhouse of the cell, and rightly so, because it converts your food back into a usable form of energy. Okay, so both plants and animals use mitochondria. So the plants uh, can't use the sugars on their own for energy, so they still have to burn it for them to work, okay? So let's see if we have questions now. All right, so first question, how long does this production process take? Okay, so when you're making proteins, it actually depends on what protein you're making. 
So we usually uh, express it as a unit. We don't uh, express it as the number of units you can make in time, but the number at uh, the speed at which you can make it. So it's usually known as k max, or yeah, it's k max. It just means that. Uh, say, for example, if you have a K-max of 100, so you can make 100 proteins in a set unit of time. But say, for example, for uh, the main protein in blood, which is hemoglobin, so uh, red blood cells are actually discarded every two weeks. So, okay, so every two weeks, you get a new set of proteins, but the production of the protein itself takes just minutes or even seconds. Okay, so it, you need a lot. Okay, so for say for example, for hemoglobin, you need four units of the actual protein to work. Okay, so if that's just one cell, so imagine how many blood cells you have in your body and how much proteins you need to make for those. Okay, so let's see if we have other questions. Okay, so if we have uh, no questions yet, so let's ask our other maneuvers. Uh, did you find our activity difficult this morning? Were there any uh, trouble spots that you had? Let's start with uh, my mover nap. Um, for me, I, I think it was not hard because I've been doing a lot of other origami lately. So I've practiced um, a lot of folding. Yeah, yeah so okay. it's fun. <laughs> okay, so it's a very easy activity to do. So if you can't do it yourself, so you could always ask your parents for help. Okay, so there are a lot of tutorials online to do different things. So not just this shark. Uh, I believe you know paper airplanes, paper boats. Okay, but all of those can really relieve our anxiety during this time, right? Okay, so uh, let's go to my mover, Abby. Was there any part of it that was difficult? Or do you think, is there a problem spot? All right, hello. <laughs> Are you there? <laughs> okay, I think our Golja is sleeping for now. Okay. Oh, no. froze. Are, are you all right? Okay. So before we go to Oh no. Okay, so all right. Uh, I are think you, you guys there? froze. <laughs> okay, so we'll go back to my mover Abby. What was the question again? In a while. Okay, okay, just give me a moment, Abby. Okay. So our next question is do all I'm cells here. do this? <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's all right, yes. Abby. So do all cells do this protein making? And where does the unit in the box go? Okay, so uh, almost all, actually all cells do protein production. So it just depends on where it goes. So that's the second question. So it depends. So there are usually four places that it could go. So inside the cell, outside the cell into the bloodstream, outside the cell into other cells. So the protein goes inside the cell itself and outside the cell to effect a change into another cell. Okay, so say for example, uh, the product uh, serotonin. So that's not a protein. It's actually a kind of lipid or a fat, but it's produced inside the cell. So that's what your smooth ER does. It makes fat-based products. And then your serotonin affects other parts of the body. Okay, so it's a hormone. So that's what you call proteins that have an effect on other cells. So that's hormones. Okay, so okay, so our next question is what happens when uh, NCOV, so I guess this is the virus now that causes COVID-19. So what happens with when that virus invades the cell? Okay, so the cell, say for example, you have a ball. Okay, so I don't have a ball right now. So imagine I have a ball that has spikes. Okay, so that's not the virus. We're imagining the cell itself. It actually has a lot of spikes where things attach to. Okay, so say for example, I have a spike. Okay, so let's use our box as our sample cell. Okay, so say for example, if this has a spike, imagine that this is our spike. When things that the cell knows, attached to that, they allow it to go inside the cell. Okay, so the common consensus with uh, the virus right now is that it replicates a protein that our body knows. Okay, so it attaches to a certain 
protein on the surface of the cell and then when it attaches so the body thinks that oh it's just a protein that it's made from probably another part of the body so it lets the virus inside okay and then your virus uh, ejects or puts out its rna or dna so <coughs> excuse me so you saw how we extracted dna last week so that material is inserted inside your cells and it hijacks it to make more virus cells okay so I guess that's a bit convoluted. So uh, if uh, we'll see the comments later again, so we'll answer the questions again in a written form. So we'll be attaching links to other resources that you could read on the uh, the questions that you sent in. Okay, so let's go back. Yes, so let's go to my mover feature. Yeah, so I was just gonna show you, Aaron, I have a ball here. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. It does not have spikes like um, the coronavirus or like coronaviruses, but it has okay. things here. So um, maybe right. I can so, follow uh, up could you show question it, uh, from towards the middle, Fisher. There, yeah. Okay. In the so middle. to uh, expound on our question, so say for example that the green ball is the cell of your body. So the blue and white spots are different surface proteins that are on the surface of the cell. Okay, so that's actually accurate since there's not only one kind of surface protein. There are lots of kinds. Okay, but to simplify it, you have two on your ball. Okay, so other proteins or viruses attach to those points. Okay, so the main thing that viruses do is that they replicate proteins or structures that are commonly found inside the body. Okay, so when it attaches to one of those spots, the body thinks that it's just <clears throat> excuse me, it just thinks it's a normal product. So it goes in and then infiltrates the body. Okay, so let's go back to my mover, Abby. Are you with us? Hello. Okay, all right. Okay, I'm so here. Do you have any difficulties with your part of the activity this morning? Um, not really. I think it was really fun to put the fins in, but I was just confused a bit with the initial holding of the shark. But yeah, okay, so overall, it was relatively easy be... to do, and okay, yeah. a lot of people would enjoy it. Okay, so the folding could be confusing, so that actually happens inside the cell as well. Okay, so say for example, when your DNA is mutated or it has unwanted changes, when you convert your DNA into a protein, that causes improper folding. When an improper protein, uh, an improper part of the protein is inside it. Okay, so if it does not fold properly, it does not work properly. Okay, so that's the main thing with proteins. So if it doesn't fold, it doesn't work. And if it doesn't work, usually the peroxisomes and lysosomes, your destruction and recycling centers, destroy them and use again the raw materials to make a correct protein. Okay, so last one. So let's go to my mover feature. So did you have any difficulties with our paper box? <laughs> yes, I had difficulties, especially during the practice. I couldn't seem to fold it in the right way. So I had yeah. to <laughs> practice a lot. So as you mentioned last time, um, if I fold it incorrectly, it's um if i remember correctly it's kind of similar to when um there's a mutation if i remember correctly right? yeah yeah all right yeah. So okay at least now i learned how to fold it correctly yeah okay so inside the cell what actually happens when you make the box so say for example you have a bubble blower so that has a circular part in the middle right and then a stick so when you blow air it makes a half circle first and then when you blow in enough air, it closes okay, into the full bubble. So that's what also happens inside the cell itself. Okay, so it, it sort of buds off from the circle. So that's also a difficult process to do. And a lot of proteins are lost when the box isn't done correctly. Okay, so let's do our one last check for questions. All right. Okay, so if you have other questions, okay, so we have one question here. Do we have the exact same proteins for the same functions as other animals, such as insulin? Okay, so 
it depends on which animal we're talking about. So in the line of evolution, so say for example, we're more related to gorillas than to fishes. Therefore, our proteins are more related to those of gorillas than to fishes. Okay, so the structure itself, the shape itself could be different, slightly different between animals, but they could function in similar ways. Okay, so it really depends on the DNA of your animal itself. Okay, so that's the most important thing. So that's why if it's mutated, a lot of wrong things happen because of it. Okay, so it's not just an issue that's confined to humans. So all organisms, not just animals, even bacteria, plants, and fungi like mushrooms have the same uh, production processes and the same issues because of those. Okay, so I guess that's our last question for now. So thank you very much for joining us for this morning's Mind at Home. If you have other questions, please don't hesitate to place them in the comment section. We'll be available throughout the day and even the days while the MECQ is still ongoing to answer your questions. Okay, so if you would like to try this at home, I encourage that you do this also here on a Zoom meeting or even on other platforms, even, uh, especially say, for example, you have older relatives that you can't visit right now due to health hazards. Okay, so since they are the most vulnerable population right now, okay, so if you decide not to visit them, this is one way that you could still bond with them with an activity that's relatively easy to do even for young kids as low as one year old or as high as adults as 101 years old. Okay, so if you do this, uh, don't forget to take a screenshot of your meeting. Take the consent of your other visitors and participants first. And don't forget to tag the Mind Museum uh, Facebook page so that we can share it to our audiences how easy it could be. So use also the hashtags, hashtag Mind at Home and hashtag the Mind Museum. And uh, we're excited to see what other origami projects you could do inside our confined boxes that we have right now during this quarantine period. Okay, so thank you very much again, once again for joining us this morning. Don't forget to wash your hands uh, before and after you do this, especially since scissors and cutters are made of metal. And in the case that you do get paper cuts, uh, do wash your hands immediately. Okay, so not just for bruises, always wash your hands to keep the threat of the virus that causes COVID-19 uh, at bay. Okay, so once again, finally, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Uh, do catch our next Mind at Home on Wednesday at the same time, that's 11 a.m. with my mover, Abby. Okay, so she's actually here with us. So she'll be doing another activity related to viruses on Wednesday, 11 a.m. Okay, thank you for joining us and we'll see you on Wednesday. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.